Hi, I'm Kristen Jezik and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I cover everything self-care so that you can live a self-care life. Today, I'm going to be talking about Egyptian magic cream. It's something I found when I was looking for all natural products to deal with my really dry winter skin. And today we are going to cover what it is, how to use it, and all of the pros and cons I have found so far. Now, before we get started, I want to let you know that if you are looking to try this product for yourself, there are some imposter brands, meaning they've copied the label or most of the label and they have different product inside. So if you're buying from eBay or another untrustworthy retailer, I would just do your due diligence. But to save you some trouble, I have linked their Amazon account below, which is where I got it. So I know it's legit. And you can also go to their website and use the store locator to find a location where they sell it near you. So as I mentioned, I found this product when I was looking for an all natural remedy for my super dry winter skin. An Egyptian magic cream is actually made with only six ingredients. They are olive oil, beeswax, honey, bee pollen, bee propolis, and royal jelly. Egyptian magic has a Vaseline type quality when you first open it. And you're just gonna take a little bit, it, it does not require much, rub it together in your hands, and then you're gonna notice it has an olive oil type consistency. And when it is that oily consistency, that's when you want to use it. You wanna rub it in, it's just gonna help it absorb better. Now, because Egyptian magic does turn to oil so easily with just a little bit of heat, you wanna keep it in a cooler room and maybe outside of your bathroom that's gonna get really steamy and warm from the shower. I typically keep it in my bedroom or in my office and then I apply it when I need it. There are a lot of uses for this moisturizer and because they don't all apply to me but I don't want you to miss them, I'm gonna go through the 20 that they recommend on their website and share if I have personal experience and if I agree or not. So number one is an amazing moisturizer, which I completely agree with. I will put this on my face at night or my elbows or my hands or my body and wherever I wake up that I've put it on, it is softer in the morning. So I really recommend it as a moisturizer for dry winter skin, which is what I originally wanted it for and I'm very happy with its moisturizing. Healing burns, treating cuts and scrapes, fading scars, eczema and psoriasis relief, a hair conditioner. Now you can put this in as a hair mask and leave it in for an hour and wash your hair out or you can just put a little on the ends as a conditioner if you have some flyaways. It's really moisturizing and you can kind of hold down that hair. A lip balm. Now I will say I have tried it as a lip balm and I can't recommend it as a lip balm because I'm not crazy about the flavor. So it does have a slight bee odor, a slight bee flavor. And if that's not something that bothers you, then I think it's a great lip balm. Uh, you might compare it to other lip balms you have that have beeswax in it. But for me, I'm just not a fan of beeswax, so I do not use it as a lip balm. Aftershave, yes. When I shave my legs, I will put it on any irritation or bumps and just help smooth and moisturize that area. An after sun lotion, I would imagine that helps because it's sun is really drying on the skin and so to help get that moisture back in and heal that, I can see that happening. A vaginal moisturizer and lubricant. I haven't used that one. I can't, I can't speak to it, but if you use it, let me know how that goes. Hand and cuticle cream. So I love this as a hand and cuticle cream. I will put it on my cuticles and put some gloves on like this and just do work around the office or on my home. It really moisturizes and that the gloves just seal in that moisture. Or you can do this before you go to bed. Just put it on, put some gloves on and go to bed and seal in the moisture that way. It works really well. A makeup remover. Now I use coconut oil to remove my makeup, but some people do break out from using coconut oil. So this seems like a little, little more sensitive product and maybe you would not break out. I know some people treat it, treat their acne with it and it doesn't make it worse. So that's something that's individual. You'd have to see if that works for you, but it might be a good alternative to coconut oil if coconut oil is too heavy for your skin. An eye cream. I did try this as an eye cream and it burned my eyes a little bit. So if you're going to use it as an eye cream, I would make sure you're doing it far enough away from your eye that there's no fear that it's gonna get in it. And then I would avoid touching your eye once you've used the product because it did sting my eye a little bit. Or maybe it won't bother you. A massage balm. Now, 
I haven't tried this as a massage balm other than on myself, but I would imagine it would be so hydrating and it does go on like a body oil, but it's super absorbative in your skin. And so I think it would be really moisturizing. Tattoo aftercare, diaper rash. This might be an all natural uh, alternative for you for diaper rash and treating your, your kids. Again, do your research and you obviously don't want to introduce them to anything they might have an allergy to because there's so many bee products in this, I would just be really overly cautious before you apply it to your kids. During and after pregnancy. Now I have not ever been pregnant nor am I pregnant now, but I would imagine that because this is so hydrating, it would really help your skin grow and expand during pregnancy. And so I'm definitely gonna keep it around to see if it helps avoid or heal stretch marks. Uh, makeup primer. Now, as a caveat, I would say it does go on very oily and can take a while to absorb. So I typically use it at night. So when you use a primer, keep in mind to use a small amount and it will probably give you a more dewy look when you apply your makeup. But if you're gonna go for a more matte look and you don't want that shine, I would just skip it as a makeup primer. A hydrating face mask, yes. So you can put this on for 30 minutes and just let it soak in and wash it off with a hot towel. It would just feel amazing. If you're going to do it as a mask that you're gonna take off, I would do a thicker layer than you're gonna apply at night if you're gonna leave it on all night. Cracked heels and elbows. I will treat my dry heels with this. Right before I go to bed, I will just put some on my heels and put my feet in socks and sleep in it. And it softens them so much through the night. So I definitely recommend it for that. Before you try using this product on your skin, I would test a small amount to make sure that you don't have an adverse reaction or any allergies. Of course, you should do that with any new skincare. You don't wanna just put something all over your skin and hope that it's gonna be okay. I would just test out a small area and build up to a bigger and bigger area, of course, giving it plenty of time in between to make sure you're not going to have a reaction. So these are my pros for the Egyptian Magic Cream. I do love that it's all natural, that there's no fillers or chemicals. And I do love that it moisturizes my face, which is what I wanted to do. I also love that it has so many different uses. So while I don't use all of those uses that it's listed for, it, it does a fair amount. So I'm not buying multiple products or multiple bottles of treatments for the same few issues. And so I love that it does treat a lot of things. It, it makes me feel more sustainable and like I'm saving money instead of buying 50 different products. I also love that I tend to have sensitive skin that will break out to new skincare and I didn't have any issues while transitioning to this. I do also have some cons for Egyptian magic. So there are a lot of bee products, and if you are allergic, that can be a huge issue, so it might not be available to as many people. Another con I have is that there is a slight beeswax smell to it. It's not super overpowering, and so I push through it because I want the moisturized skin, but if you're super sensitive to smells or if the odor is gonna bother you, you're really not gonna be able to use it as much as you would to get all the benefits, so that's a con. My third con is it does make you pretty oily and shiny and you can't really touch stuff or interact with a lot of stuff. So you can really, for me, I found that I can only use it with gloves or right before I'm about to go to bed. So if I wake up with dry skin, it isn't great. I don't wanna oil up my body before I go about my day. So I wish it would absorb a little quicker, but it's just gonna be used as a nighttime routine for me. And my last con is that it does not taste great. So I can't use it as a lip balm which I would love to just toss it in my purse and have an all natural lip balm, but it's not my favorite flavor. So I can't use it as that, but it does still have so many other uses. So that's not a huge con, just a little one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this review of Egyptian Magic Cream. If you did, go ahead and like and comment. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this or if you have other ideas for self-care routines that you wanna see. And if you're still watching, thank you so much. I love you. You are doing so much to support my channel and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So if you wanna see more videos like this or videos on other types of self-care, hit the subscribe button and the bell and you'll be notified every Saturday when I post a new video. I'll see you next week.